Don't want you being like all up on me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <clears throat> As we're preparing for this, um, there is a header going across here to support this weight kind of thing. Okay. That kind of thing. Support this weight that goes across here. So we're just going to put a bottom plate like we're building a little mini wall. There's already a top plate here, so we don't have to worry about it. Um, what I did was I went ahead and measured this and this. Going across here from stud to stud is 40 inches, same at the top. Going up and down the side, it's, four, it's 36 and 3 eighths. Now, I know you don't have to be exact when you're doing rough framing and all that stuff, but you see that the drywall sticks up a little bit. That's about an eighth of an inch, okay? Now over here, it does the same thing. And then the top one sticks down, so it would give you a different measurement. And I want my studs to be nice and tight here. Um, I don't necessarily have to put one across there, but I'm going to do it anyway, just so it makes me feel better because it's going to make it stronger. And uh, so, anyway, and I just write my measurements down on the sides. So, if we got a 40 inch space and these are 36 and 3 eighths, 2 by 4 is 1 and a half inches wide, okay? So, we'll do our 36 minus 1 and a half when we cut these. All right? Say action or something. You know what I you're doing. Action. Oh. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> <laughs> action. Okay. All right. 40 inches are one board. I mean, when I do it, I have to make a mark, make a crow's foot, put a little X on the side because that's the side of the line I want to take. With rough framing, I'm not really worried about it so much. Okay, because the X is the side, what I'll do is, is I'll run my blade. Okay, you can see it here. I'll run my blade down that side of the line instead of right down the line. Because this blade is an eighth inch thick. It tends up taking about an eighth inch of meat out. So if you're trying to do really close cutting, like you're doing finish work, you want it to be exact. So. Alright, um. Got our boards too far apart here. Got our boards here. Our bench is too far apart here. Alright. Now, when you cut and you're doing rough framing, um, you don't need to put a speed square on this. Not, it doesn't need to be perfect like that. And what I do is, I'm running it. I know my blade runs right true right down this, this gap here, okay? So I'm going to run it to where that gap is right along the side of that that line, okay? Now when I'm going, I can see the distance here, here and here, okay? And I, sometimes I put my thumb here, and this way I can just do it, once the blade gets going, it'll cut and it'll, it'll run smoother. Um, I don't recommend putting your hand anywhere else on these things, you just wanna hold it, and here we go. Bring the blade up to running speed before you start cutting. <laughs> time ago I used to know several carpenters and framers and I mean I work for form form carpentry companies framing companies which carpentry is my favorite thing to do I mean if you can do carpentry you can pretty much do any other construction create trade as far as constructing and that doesn't mean I'm not talking about electrical I'm not talking about plumbing I'm not talking about HVAC I'm talking about tile cabinets drywall, a lot of that's the same same thing. You get the same general idea. Okay, um, but there was an older guy that my grandmother used to always remind me of. Um, he's passed away a long time ago. But he, used, he was a master carpenter back when they actually had master carpenters. Now they're just, I don't know, carpentry contractors or something. Um, anyway, he would always say, he's like, measure seven times and cut once. Um, I've come to more of a measure twice, cut once, so that way we're making sure, because there's a lot of times I go to cut and I'll be an inch off because I thought it was 36 and a half instead of, you know, 37 and a half for some reason. So there's our first 40 inch board. All right, now, I'm taking too much stuff in my pocket. All right. 
you could do math or you could just do stuff real quick, okay? You got 36, 36 and an eighth. You're gonna go back to 35 and an eighth. Four eighths, right there. So 34 and seven eighths is an inch and a half shy of the 36 and three eighths, okay? So that's where the 36 and three eighths was, inch and a half. What that is is, that inch and a half is the thickness of this, okay? Two by four is actually three and a half by one and a half. It's not actually two by four. Lots of different reasons people have for it being that way, you know, maybe because like you're building a wall, you got a half inch of drywall, but it doesn't really make sense to me because three and a half plus half inch drywall is cool, so that's four even. However, you can put drywall on the other side of this and now it's four and a half, so whatever. It's just a standard they came up with. Maybe it's what they did so that way they can um, save on cutting material or something. Okay, again, I put my X on that side. I want to run my blade down that side. Bring it up to speed. Now, if you're a perfectionist, you can cut really, really slow. But you don't need to be a perfectionist to cut. You can you know, just, just take your time on the cuts, and as you get better at it, you get more confident at it, you'll get more confident at it. So, anyway, do the same thing here. So now I know it's 34 and 7 eighths for my X. Okay. I don't always use a speed square to make my line. I usually just cut. I'm doing it for you guys, so that way you see. Speed square. One of the best things you can have as a, as a carpenter or doing framing. There's bigger ones. Um, this is about the smallest one. Um, I think it's Thompson. Anyway, with some of these you can get a little booklet. And it's got a lot of different... Uh, Measurements and sizes of different things for running rafters for roofs and joists and your angles and cut stuff like that. So, very valuable thing to have. All right, bring it up to speed and cut down the side again. Sebastian's trying to throw stuff away now. Mm. Okay. I use them for more than just uh, listening. I use them for not hearing. It's a lot safer for my ears. As I've gotten older, I've lost my hearings a lot. So. wonder why you don't just take this, line it up here, make a mark, and then line it up there and make a mark. The thing that ends up happening is when you do that repetitively, unless you have a template that you use to make all your marks the same, <coughs> you make your line here and you cut down your line, you could be adding a sixteenth or even up to an eighth of an inch on each of your cuts. So that means as you cut and you keep using different boards and keep doing that, it can end up making your boards longer and longer. For such a small job like this, I'm just going to measure them one at a time. I'm not in a big hurry. The homeowners are breathing down our necks. Maybe. Maybe. 
I got to the place that the uh, garage door open up there. I've been working to see what you were going to do. Oh, the moment. Our bottom plate, like I said, I don't have to put this in here, but I'm doing it because it's just gonna, to me, it's gonna just give it more strength. Um, I don't know, they might want to, you know, hang one of those, you know, 100 inch TVs up here to go <laughs> past the walls and stuff like that, you know. Some people are getting a little carried away with TVs these days. Anyway, um, green tip, star, um, it's, we call it a GRK tip because this usually comes, we get these with our GRKs. So we use GRK screws a lot. Um, GRK uh, lags, um, in my opinion, far superior than uh, just using galvanized lags. They're way stronger. Um, for this, I'm just going to use it. It's a decking screw. However, we could use it for framing, light framing too. It's not a structural thing as much as uh, um, you know, the walls that hold everything up. So, again, ears. Unless you're going to get old like me, and then you're not going to be able to hear anymore. And your kids would be like, Daddy, you're going deaf. It's good, though. I can't hear them, though. <laughs> when they tell me that, I don't know what they're saying. Sometimes it's good. You just use it to your advantage, though. You want to talk about Sebastian? Yeah. And uh, when it comes to uh, tools, this is an impact driver. Um, far superior than trying to use a drill for this. Um, you hear it going brrrr. What that is doing is it's just, it's like hitting it with a hammer while you're screwing it in at the same time. It has a way more torque. Um, it's less fatigue on your hand, your arms, your forearm. This one has different adjustments for to go slower and faster. Um, rigid. Can't say enough about rigid. Um, it's a, it's a, my favorite, tool, my favorite brand, our family's favorite brand, because um, lifetime guarantee. Where we live out in South Carolina, we could drive an hour away, and this is where they fix it. Otherwise, you could send it to them. Um, if you buy the batteries in a kit, the batteries lifetime warranty also. If you buy the batteries separate, it's got three year warranty. Um, and some of the other things like compressors and stuff have three year warranties, but. Their hand tools, power tools, uh, table saws, circular saws, not skill saws. Skill saw is a brand, circular saw is a tool. Um, anyway, just thought I'd mention that. Standard drywall in houses is half inch drywall. Garages are usually five eighths. Um, has to do with the fire rating and has to do with uh, carbon monoxide or dioxide, dioxide for going from your garage into your house and killing you while you're sleeping kind of thing. So I'm just leaving this out the same distance as the drywall that's there. And these side pieces, are not something I actually have to put in here. I need to put these in. I'm just doing it for strength because, see if you can see here, this piece, it's just a single piece that. All right, anyway, what I was talking about a minute ago is over here, this piece right here, there's nothing supporting this up, okay? Now, if you look up here, see it's just screwed in, it's just toe nailed in, and then that's, Screwed in from the bottom, going up. Same with that one. And then over here, same thing. So I'm putting these here to be a support. Okay, I just feel better about it. It doesn't have to do it. But, I mean, a 2 by 4 is like 3 bucks, And I'm using, what, two 2 by 4s for this whole job? So anyway, so that's why I'm doing these on the end. Give me the 2 by 4 
Yeah. God, you Is that machine. possible? Huh? Nothing. Uh-huh. Action. Alright, that's piece over here. Remember, they're kept the same size. So it's a lot tighter than this side. Which is good for me. I like it when it's tighter like that. Because I know it's talking to my son a second ago about how doing this might actually make, make me a politer person, um, especially to my kids, because sometimes I know I'm a, a hard, hard uh, butt. <laughs> they would never tell you that, though. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm sweet, nice, pure as the driven snow kind of guy. I don't know what kids he thinks he has. Hand me that two by four, would you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, I'll use a marker so you guys can see it better. Okay, find my, my center, okay? It's like 37. The way that I was taught a long time ago to find a, your center point on something or your half, okay, is I could go to 37, line that up, look right down there, 18 and a half. Okay, now I just got close with it. I wasn't trying to be ex exact. So, so, so you got 18 and a half. From where this side is going to be a little bit off. 18 and a half. Okay, so I know that my center will be in the center of those two. It's a lot simpler, faster, whatever. Okay, <clears throat> so now. I want to give it, I just want like a 16 inch space to make it easier for these people. Okay. Just out of curiosity, that's almost 41. It's 40, 40 and a half. Close. Anyway, so I'm just going to go eight in each direction. Pretty darn close to where I was saying I was probably going to put these things. <clears throat> now you could go to the extreme of I put this here like that. That's my center of where I want my my two by fours to be. So come over a three quarters of an inch. I can see, which is right there. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. That's what I'm supposed to be wearing me so I can actually see what the heck I'm doing. Anyway, make my mark. Make my mark. And what I'm going to do is, my son's going to hand me my two foot level that we didn't bring in with us yet. Alright, I'm going to be turning the breakers off for my dad so he doesn't get electrocuted because that probably wouldn't be good but um basically he's gonna call them out and then i'm gonna turn them off until we find it or i mean they're labeled so i'll just go with the one that i probably think would be it but and then he will tell me whether or not it works and then we'll do it a couple times to make sure when it goes on and off he's using a tester um just to make sure so we didn't like get it wrong and then just electrocute him Want to double check because electricity will kill you, so you need to be careful. But okay. All right. What we're gonna end up doing here now is, is we were gonna just frame it in. Um, the hang TV, but what we're going to be doing is 
we're going to be building a cubby that goes across here and that electrical on the uh, um, cable coax wire we're gonna have to run that into this cubby and also from this cubby we need to run one that goes up to the back of the TV and of course it's focusing in and out <laughs> All right, all right. We kind of changed things up here because we're going to be putting a cubby down here. We need to run our electrical into here. We need to run a coax wire to coming in the cable wire into here. And then we're going to run a, one of these other wires. It's going to go here behind the TV. And then this other cable wire, coax wire, will just come up here and come out through here, which will be behind the TV also. So now instead of using this as our base. I want to make it stronger, so putting some cripples in, made a makeshift header. Um, it's not exactly the thickness. It's not exactly the thickness of the 2x4, because usually you'd put a piece of half inch uh, material in between here. But for this, what we're doing here, it's not necessary because I'm not framing it to where I'm going to be working on both sides of the wall. I'm only using the one side. So that's what I'm doing here with that. So now, this top plate up here now. We've got a, a header. I want that to go in tight like that. So that way, it's actually supporting what's up there. And again, because I want to be able to talk to my grandkids. You'll be able to talk to not hear them. <laughs> okay, whatever, smart Alec. We've come to learn that the star tip these uh, I think they're 15 star tip is whatever it doesn't say but anyway the green tip the GRK is the I think it's their 15 they're number 25 15 something like that anyway we find that these are a lot better than Phillips Definitely better than straight edge. Um, flat tip screws, I don't even know who invented those. Maybe that was just, it was very necessary back when they made it, but it's one of the most frustrating screws. And so many people end up doing a screw and end up cutting yourself because flat tip screwdriver is almost like a blade. Um, anyway, I already have my marks where I wanna, wanna put these. I'll take my speed square and uh, My mark down. This is where my uh, trusty assistant has my uh, two, foot, two foot level for me. I start them. I start them like that, then I bend them up. Stop. Don't drive it all the way in. You drive it all the way, it's going to pull it over. What I do is get one in. Drive that one all the way in because this one will keep it from moving. There you go. That's the top of that one. So 
Well, the two by four trusty assistant. Yes, all you ladies out there in uh, YouTube land, he's taken. Oh, gosh. He's got a girlfriend. <laughs> yes, they're a beautiful girlfriend. <laughs> Such a butt kisser. <laughs> That's definitely true, though. sticking my tools in all these different places instead of back working. Now because this doesn't fit, if I go at a little bit of an angle like that, it comes out, that's good. It works for me. If you have to move it over, don't leave your level on it. The level is a precision type instrument and I know I see a lot of people beat the, beat the heck out of them. The thing is, is you want your level to last. What's our saying about tools, Sebastian? You take care of tools, they take care of you. Yep. Especially if this is the kind of work you want to do, or if it's just a... Uh, DIYer. Huh? A DIYer. Yeah, or if it's your livelihood. pay for the tools and materials. Not saying you got to buy the most expensive thing in the world, but when you buy something that's cheap, it's usually cheap for a reason. Now with this, Actually, purposely cut this one a little bit shorter so I can show you what to do here. Yes. And I made my marks. This one line again. This is framing. This isn't 100% accurate. Like you could be like a tiny, tiny bit off. I'm holding it proud, holding it tall, whatever, standing out a little bit. I'm at an angle. So as I tighten it, pulls it back in. So now I'm good. Then I can go ahead and take my next one at an angle. Now these two are good. And then my next one again, I'm going to put it in straight kind of just to get it started. Then in there, stop. I don't want to drive it all the way through, all the way in because it'll pull this. Okay, now we're going to have our wire. Right, this wire is going to come out here. Coax wire. Then this one. Come out here now. Yeah, I could put conduit on this, but this is not necessary because this is not something we're going to be doing over and over and over. These two right here, yeah, electrical tape. Now, I'm going to put the tape on this. I'm going to tape this on here. That way that stays there. I know where it's at. Now, this. Do this. Okay, the rest of the keep here. Now, this coax wire the wire that's coming in. Okay. And this coax wire is the one that's going out. 
What I'm going to do is first I'm just going to separate them again. Sorry, I'm sure this one like that. I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to take the end of it and go a little bit long with it. I'm going to fold this in on itself, make like a flag. You got some blue painter's tape, that'll be good too. So this way I know that one's going to the TV. This one's coming from whoever the cable company is, or net, network company, or whatever. I put these together. There's no power running to these right now. All right, I do something like that. I want to be able to take it back off easier instead of cut it. Just make a flag. That way they're stuck together. Go over here. Pull these together like this. Just, just to make it neater. No one's ever going to see it until it's taken apart someday. And uh, something you could do if you want. You can see back there. Uh, these homeowners are doing like a time capsule, which is really cool. And uh, they left a message on the piece of drywall and a, and a Bible. God willing, when they open it up, they're still allowed to read the Bible. In its original format. <laughs> anyway, I'm finding myself yelling when I have these earbuds in. have any power going to them. We've tested them and tested them and tested them and turning things on and off. It's really strange because these homeowners said they've never turned these lights on before. So I guess they were just for a show. <laughs> but anyway, so we're just gonna wire nut that. The original electric again, we've tested everything. The breakers in the box are all on, tested these switches over here, nothing goes to it. So we're gonna wire nut them, put them off, wire nut them off, put them back in the hole. And we're gonna cut a circle for that, it's four inch orange junction box circle, which we cut that easy. We have a hole saw that we put on the end of our drill to cut the hole. So we'll just take a dry what we have, cut the hole, and then uh, it should fit right in here and then we'll mud it. Um, so right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a piece of drywall right here. The reason I tape this like this is for my purposes, it makes it a lot easier, is there's a difference between new construction junction box and old construction junction box. New construction, it just nails right on here, okay? Old construction, it has, you cut the hole where you need it in between the studs, and then there's, you put it in the hole, and then you, as you're screwing the two things, it goes like this, these little things flip out, grab the drywall, and pull it tight to the drywall. The reason why I want to do this here is because I want this box centered. So wherever they put the TV, it'll be centered in here so they can actually be a little bit lower. But they can, it'll be centered underneath the TV, so that way, when they put their hanger thing up here, you know, it'll uh, it'll be centered and it'll just look better. And uh, and it's easier too because when I go to cut this, I don't need to be super precise in cutting this or get out a, a roto zip and put the board up here and then roto zip around it. It's just gonna make more of a mess. I'm trying to be clean as I can today because until we sand this, we're not gonna be making a huge mess. So. We'll get this all drywall, get the drywall put up here, run our strip down here, we'll mud it, tape it, put some more mud on it, I guess, and then and then that'll be it for the day. And then, of course, when we do that, we'll be filling these holes also. And before we do anything else, we're eating lunch.